Uh, so we wanted to accelerate this process. We wanted to get away from this silly trip up and down on a submarine, average depth of the ocean, 12,000 feet, two and a half hours to get to work in the morning, two and a half hours to get to home, five hour commute to work, three hours of bottom time, average distance traveled one mile on a 42,000 mile mountain range. Great job security, but not the way to go. So I began designing a, a new technology of telepresence uh, using robotic systems to replicate myself so I wouldn't have to cycle my vehicle system. We began to introduce that in our explorations and we continued to make phenomenal discoveries with our new robotic technologies. Again, looking for something else, moving from one part of the mid-ocean ridge to another. We were off, the scientists were off watch and they came across incredible life forms. They came across new creatures they had not seen before, but more importantly, they discovered edifices down there that they did not understand, that did, did, not, did not make sense. They were not above a magma chamber. They shouldn't be there. Uh, and we called it Lost City. And Lost City was characterized by these incredible limestone formations and upside down uh, pools. Look at that. How do you do that? That's water upside down. We, tr we went in underneath it, tapped it, and we found that it had the pH of Drano the pH of 11, and yet it had uh, chemosynthetic bacteria living in it and at this extreme environment. And, uh, the hydrothermal vents were in an acidic environment, all the way at the other end in, a, in an alkaline environment at a pH of 11, life existed. So life was much more uh, uh, creative than we had ever thought. Again, discovered by accident. Just two years ago, working off Santorini, where people are sunning themselves on the beach, unbeknownst to them in Caldera nearby, we found phenomenal hydrothermal vent systems, another more life systems. This was two miles from where people go to sunbathe and they were oblivious to the existence of this system. Again, you know, we stop at the water's edge. Recently, diving off in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, finding uh, pools of water, this time not upside down, right side up, bingo, it's, 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 uh, you'd think you're in air until your fish swims by. You're looking, at, you're looking at brine pools formed by salt diapirs. Near that was methane. Was, I've never seen volcanoes of methane. Uh, instead of belching out lava, they were belching out big, big bubbles of methane, and they were creating these volcanoes, and there were flows not of lava, but of the mud coming out of the earth, but driven by methane. I've never seen this before. Uh, moving on, there's more than just natural history that uh, beneath the sea. Human history, our discoveries of the Titanic, the realization that the deep sea is the largest museum on earth. It contains more history than all the museums on land combined. And yet we're only now penetrating it, finding the state of preservation. When we found the Bismarck in 16,000 feet, we then found the Yorktown. People always ask, did you find the right ship? This said Yorktown on the stern. Uh, the <laughs> More recently, finding ancient history. Uh, how many ancient mariners have had a bad day? The number's a million. Uh, we've been discovering these along ancient trade routes where they're not supposed to be. This shipwreck sank 100 years before the birth of Christ. This one sank uh, carrying a, a prefabricated Home Depot Roman temple. And then here's one that sank at the time of Homer at 750 B.C., more recently into the Black Sea where we're exploring because there's no oxygen there. Uh, it's, it's, it's the largest reservoir of hydrogen sulfide on Earth. Shipwrecks are perfectly preserved. All their organics are perfectly preserved. We begin to excavate them. We expect to start hauling out the bodies in perfect condition with their DNA. Look at the state of preservation. Still the ad mark of a, of a carpenter's. Look at the state of those uh, artifacts. You still see the beeswax dripping. When they dropped, they sealed it. Uh, uh, this ship sank 1,500 years ago. Fortunately, we've been able to convince Congress. We begin to go on the hill and lobby, and we stole recently a ship from the United States Navy, the Okeanos Explorer, and its mission. Its mission is as good as you could get. Its mission is to go where no one has gone before on planet Earth. And it's, uh, I, was, uh, I was looking at it yesterday. It's up in Seattle. Okay. It comes online, it comes online this summer and it begins its journey of exploration. But we have no idea what we're going to find when we go out there with our technology, but certainly it's going to be going to the unknown America. This is that part of the United States that lies beneath the sea. We own all of that blue and yet, like I say, particularly the Western Territorial Trust, we don't have maps of them. We don't have maps of them. We have maps of Venus, but not of the Western Territorial Trust. The way we're going to run this, we have no idea what we're going to discover.
We have no idea what we're going to discover. We're going to discover an ancient a, a shipwreck, a Phoenician off Brazil, or a new rock formation, a new life. So we're going to run it like an emergency hospital. We're going to connect our command center to a, via high bandwidth satellite link to a building we're building at the University of Rhode Island called the Inner Space Center. And within that, we're going to run it just like you run a, a nuclear submarine, blue gold team, switching them off and on, running 24 hours a day. A discovery is made. That discovery is instantly seen in the command center a second later. But then it's connected through Internet 2, the new Internet highway that makes Internet 1 look like a dirt road on the information highway with 10 gigabits of bandwidth. We'll go into areas we have no knowledge of. It's a big blank sheet on our planet. We'll map it within hours, have the maps disseminated out to the major universities, it turns out that 90% of all the oceanographic intellect in this country are at 12 universities. They're all on I-2. We can then build a command center. This is a remote center at the University of Washington. She's talking to the pilot. She's 5,000 miles away, but she's assumed command. But the beauty of this, too, is we can then disseminate it to children. We can disseminate. They can follow this expedition. I've started a program saying, where are you, Jim? Jim Young, who helped we started a program called the Jason Project. More recently, we've started a program with the Boys and Girls Clubs of America so that we can use exploration and, and the excitement of live exploration to motivate them and excite them and then give them what they're already ready for. I would not let an adult drive my robot. You don't have enough gaming experience, but I will let a kid with no license take over control of my vehicle system. Because we want to create, we want to create the classroom of tomorrow. We have stiff competition and we need to motivate and it's all being done. It's the, the, you win or lose a, a, an engineer or a scientist by the eighth grade. The game is, be, is not over. Uh, it's over by the eighth grade. It's not beginning. We need to be not only proud of our universities, we need to be proud of our middle schools. And when we have the best middle schools in the world, we'll have the best kids pumped out of that system, let me tell you. Because this is what we want. This is what we want. This is a young lady not watching a football game, not watching a basketball game, watching exploration live from thousands of miles away, and it's just dawning on her what she's seen. And when you get a jaw drop, you can inform. You can put so much information into that mind, it's in full reset mode. And that's, this, this I hope, this I hope will be a, a future engineer or a future scientist in the battlefield for truth. And my final question, my final question, why are we not looking at moving out onto the sea? Why do we have programs to build a, a habitation on Mars? And we have programs to look at colonizing the moon, but we do not have a program looking at how we colonize our own planet and the technology is at hand. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.